Hey farm friends, my name's Georgia from Grow My Goodness here in the beautiful Bay of Plenty, New Zealand. Early spring here, which means plenty of rainfall, has really accelerated the growth in the garden. We've been super busy planting both flowers and vegetables and today we're going to check it out. Let's go! Spring really is just a fantastic time to be out doing some gardening. We get plenty of rain here, we get longer days and it's starting to get a bit warmer too. Everything that our plants love to get growing. We've been busy planting new seedlings and new sowings. We had a few things that we did grow over winter like these mini red cabbages which a few are just about ready. We, the plan was to have them ready for winter. They probably went in a little bit late, but now that spring's here, they're catching up and they're looking really good. We've got some that are definitely ready. I'm not sure what's happened. Something's got in here and started to eat some of them. There's one up here that I want to show you. I do not know what happened to this. It looks like it is starting to rot. We're going to cut them off and have a look and see what's going on here. So I'm just going to peel off some of these outer leaves here till we get to the the core or the heart of the cabbage. This one here is actually not mature yet, it's still too small. They are a small cabbage but this is not at a size where I would be comfortable taking it to the market to sell. So I think I, my best guess at what happened is that an insect has gotten in here and started to eat it and with all the rainfall it's just caused it to start rotting a wee bit. Other than it being tiny it's actually beautiful. This one here looks ready to me it's um, a good size. Yeah that's beautiful I can imagine that on the stand. It looks good. These are a small cabbage, they're actually called mini red F1. So they're not as ginormous as a big carriage that cabbage that you might see in the supermarket. We've got a little bit of damage here to these leaves, probably some insect. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Insect. Insect. Or eggs. Eggs, maybe? Anyway, we'll just. Remove these outer leaves. Must be insect. Slug. That's a slug. I'm, I'm really unhappy with those cabbages, so I need to investigate down here where I think they're doing a lot better down here. I'm hopeful that there's not going to be pest damage, but if there is, then I can't take these to market. I might as well clear these out and get something else growing in here. This one? Better than this one? I can I can already see there's a little bit of damage on here. I suspect that slugs are the culprit here. The insect net unfortunately has not stopped them. It's not too bad so far. Here we are. I 
I, I don't know what this is. I suspect it is eggs of some sort. If anybody knows what that is, please leave me a comment down below. I need a bigger knife. Although if I do peel away enough of the layers of this cabbage, it does get to a point where I think it looks pretty good but they're just not at the standard that I want to be selling these at. So I'm probably going to need to clear this bed out and just start something else in here and have a think about what I need to do to keep the pests off my cabbages. So that was a little bit disappointing. However, I do have sunflowers ready to plant. So I'm going to clear these out and get my sunflowers in here. Right next door, I've got my snapdragons. These were transplanted out just a couple of weeks ago and they're looking really good. My next steps here for these is going to be pinching them and adding over some netting to support these flowers as they grow. Then I have got half a bed here of sunflowers and I've got some beautiful red Russian kale down the other end. Now this kale um, has been here over winter and it's really starting to, to grow now. We sowed this late summer, harvesting it from it very quickly as baby leaf. Now it's really matured and we've got these beautiful big leaves. We can just snap them right off. Right next door we've got our sunflower bed. These have been in here for about three weeks now and they're looking fantastic. Plenty of growth here. This particular variety is Moulin Rouge and we've decided to plant these slightly more intensely than we have in the past and we've gone for four rows. So it'll be really exciting to see how these turn out, which we've estimated to start flowering early November. We've got about nine beds here that are currently covered. They're ready to plant. The first one here is going to be flowers and all the rest are going to come into our summer veggies. Here we've got one more planting of our mini red cabbages. These were planted out just at the end of winter so they're really starting to catch up now. Fingers crossed we don't have insect problems in this bed. Further down on the other side now in the second plot, we've got our chicory bed. We haven't had a huge amount of success with the chicory yet. However, these are looking pretty good. None of them are quite ready to harvest, but hopefully we'll have a few to take to the market soon. A few more beds here that we've covered over with the tarps just to kill off those weeds that we had in there in preparation for planting very soon. Here we've got our coriander and beetroot. The coriander has really come away with all of the rain. The beetroot has been less than successful here, but I'm really hoping that this coriander is going to hold on for another week, ready for our first market. See, look at this beautiful little basket we're making. Just next door, we've got our purplet spring onions. My experience so far with the spring onions is that they take a really long time to grow. These were planted just before winter, and now in spring, they're starting to grow. It's been quite a challenge to keep up with the weeds in this bed though. The spring onions don't cover a lot of that ground so the weeds are just popping up every week which is, has been a bit of a challenge but I love the spring onions so I'm going to persevere with them. Two beds of broccolini here that were planted about four weeks ago now. They are looking really good, plenty of growth on these. I am just hoping that they are not going to go straight to flower and we're going to get some lovely broccolini here. Right next door we've got our ranunculus. These are an absolutely beautiful flower and I've really enjoyed turning these into beautiful little posies. I have been selling them as well and the feedback that we've been getting on the ranunculus is that people absolutely love them. I do feel however that our ranuncular plants are not as happy as they should be. Um, 
either our soil perhaps just isn't fertile enough for them we have been trying to add to that we've been regularly um, adding a seaweed fertilizer in here and we've just added some um, more organic fertilizer pellets to try and boost them a little bit more to get a few more flowers here when they do stop flowering we'll pull their corms out and save them and we're going to persevere with these and hopefully use the corms again next year these are my latest plantings of turnips and radishes really great germination rates here i think that's the great thing about spring is that those daylight hours are stretching it's getting warmer there's plenty of rain we've hardly had to water and these are looking fantastic the radishes I'm hopeful that these are going to be re ready either next week or the week after. The turnips will probably need an additional week or two on top of that. I've got some carrots here that have that have germinated, which is good. I was a little bit nervous because it was still pretty cold when I did so these carrots. In fact, we might have even had a frost, but the carrots weren't worried. They still germinated, so that's fantastic. Here, I have done some spinach. I've done spinach in the past, I tried it twice, it did not work at all. I found a new variety of spinach, perpetual spinach, so you can cut it, use it as a baby leaf, it will cut and come again, so we get regular, we'll be able to get multiple harvests off the one plant, and that leaf will grow and be a really big spinach leaf, a little bit coarser in flavour and texture part of the chard family but I'm excited because it has germinated it looks like it's going to grow well here I've done more of our rainbow chard we did have a big planting of it a bit further down but we've just recently taken that out it was it had been in there for quite a long time many months over winter so we've taken that out and we're going to flip that bed and we've done a new planting of rainbow chard I've got a little bit more of our chicory and cabbage. I've got a new variety of kale here that I transplanted out just a couple of weeks ago. This is Cavolo Nero. This is the first time I've grown this kale, so I don't know a huge amount about it, but we will be bunching it up similar to our red Russian kale. A couple more beds under the tarps here. We've got our beetroot. Now I sowed this before winter with coriander interplanted. The coriander has been taken out. That went really well. It started to flower just at the end of winter. So we've taken that out and these beetroots are pretty much ready to harvest. These beetroot were direct sown, which was a bit of a controversial move on my behalf um, all of my research was telling me to transplant out my beetroots I did do that it did not go as well as I thought so I just thought what well, hey I'm gonna try and direct sow and I think they look really good my last direct sowing of beetroot was perhaps not as successful um, that was at the end of summer I think these beetroot have really benefited from being sown before winter overwintering them and then now springs arrived they're taking off The great thing about beetroot is that we can harvest them at this kind of small to medium stage and bunch them but you can leave them in the ground and let them get really big as well because they don't go woody they'll stay beautiful and red in that center I'm super happy with the color and the size of these they're looking really healthy and they're ready for market I just probably need to plant a few more of them right next door to the beetroots we've got another bed of sunflowers these are probably three or four weeks old now looking fantastic on track for a November harvest the last bed in this plot is 
pretty much only what I can describe as a failure or a, a failed crop. It is our red cherry radishes. I did plant them probably in winter. A few have come up really nicely but nowhere near enough to take to market. With all of this rainfall we've been having these radishes, some of them have just split right open. A bit of a small first spring harvest but I've got a nice wee selection here for the fridge and I'm hoping to be back at the markets within the next two weeks. Other than the cabbages which were a bit of a disappointment, I know that we'll have great bunches of kale, coriander, some beetroot, some radishes, some turnips and even some beautiful posies. Well that's going to be all for this video today guys. As always thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.